The Sequence Read Archive, or SRA, is the largest publicly available repository of high-throughput sequencing data. The archive accepts data from all branches of life, as well as metagenomic and environmental surveys. This video is a step-by-step -step tutorial, mostly for people who have never submitted to SRA before. An SRA submission includes a few core components, bioproject, biosample, and SRA, with both metadata and raw sequence data. A bioproject describes the goal and scope of your study and includes information about participants and grants. One bioproject can be used to link multiple sequence submissions. Biosample provides information about the biological specimen from which your sequences are derived. The SRA metadata provides information about the sequencing platform and library construction. These are all critical pieces of information for anyone who wants to use your sequences. You can create bioproject and biosample submissions before creating an SRA submission, or you can start an SRA submission and create bioproject and biosamples as part of the SRA submission. That's what I'll be doing in this demonstration. To get to the SRA submission wizard page, you can start on the NCBI homepage. Click Submit, then scroll down to the SRA section and click the Submit button. After logging in, click on New Submission. In this example, I'm submitting paired end sequences from a mouse metagenomic study. In the Submitter page, fill in or make any updates to your information. Then click Continue. In the General Info page, since I am creating a bioproject and biosamples within my SRA submission, I'll select No for both here. I'll be adding those data in the next page. I don't want these data released immediately following processing, so I'll select a release date about one year in the future and click Continue. We now see additional tabs for bioproject and biosample. These help tips are very useful, noting for project title that this will be displayed publicly. I've pasted in my title, and I'll add this description. My project is not part of a larger initiative, so I'll leave this as no, and we highly recommend that you include the grant or grants associated with your project. With the Add Grants menu, you can look up your NIH grant right here, or add manually. For non-NIH grants, you'll need to provide the grant ID and title, as well as the funding agency. I'll move on to the next page. Now I can start entering biosample information. Although optional, I'm going to filter packages by selecting Mouse Gut Metagenome. Filtering is helpful because it gives you the most relevant set of packages, and choosing the right package helps you in the next step when you provide attributes for your biological samples. I'll choose the Metagenome or Environmental package. And I can now enter my biosample attributes. I'm going to choose the built-in table editor, but you could download the biosample package spreadsheet, fill it out, then come back here to upload the file. The fields in this table come from the package that I selected on the previous page. For brevity, I'll fill in only the required fields, starting with sample name. I mentioned earlier that this was a submission of paired end sequences. I have four samples, but I will enter only one sample name per pair of forward and reverse sequences. You will see how to enter the paired end sequence files later in the SRA metadata step. So I'll fill in these four sample names, three for different days and a control, mouse stool day one, etc. Next, enter the organism name. In most cases, you can find the name in the current NCBI taxonomy database. If not, follow the tooltip guide and enter a new name. For metagenome samples, please select one of the existing NCBI metagenome names. I'll enter mouse gut metagenome. For host, use the scientific name, not a common name. In this case, I'll enter mus musculus. The isolation source is stool, and for collection date, you need to add at least the year, but we encourage year, month, and day. 
More guidance is in the Help tip. For geographic location, add at least the country, but more information is better. I'll add a country, state, and city. Latitude and longitude are especially useful for field samples and providing a more precise location. Those are all of the required fields, so I'll click Continue, and I see this error message. Your table upload failed because multiple biosamples cannot have identical attributes. I won't read the full message now, but in brief, each of your biosamples must have differentiating information, excluding, and this is an important point, excluding sample name, title, bioproject accession, and description. You may recall that my collection date was the same for day three and the control, so that was the cause for the error. But what if I want to keep that date? One solution is to enter values in the source material identifiers column. I'll add day one, day two, day three, and control. Now no rows in the table have identical attributes. I'll click continue to run the check again. And I'm ready to continue to step six, SRA metadata. I'm going to choose the built-in table editor, but similar to biosample attributes, you could download the metadata template, fill it out, and then upload it here. And again, I'll fill in only the required fields, starting with sample name. These names should match those in biosample attributes, and you can use the pull-down menu to fill in these name fields. Next are the library IDs, DD1, DD2, DD3, and the control. Then I'll add this title, RNA-Seq of Mouse, Stool Day 1. Note that these titles will be displayed on public pages. And be sure to include specific sample names or library IDs. Here I've used Stool Day 1, etc. I'll move quickly through the next several fields, but notice the pull-down menus. Library Strategy is RNA-Seq. Library Source, Metagenomic. Library Selection, PCR. Library layout is paired. Platform is Illumina. And instrument model, Illumina MySeq. I'll paste in a design description, which is a free text field that should include detailed information about your experimental design and library construction protocol. And for file type, use the pull down menu to see the accepted file types. Mine are all FASTQ, but I'll demonstrate that if you choose BAM, two additional fields appear. You must fill out one of these fields. See the help tip for more information. Now it's time to enter my file names for both the forward and reverse sequence files from each of my four samples. In my case, day one underscore one is one strand, underscore two is the other strand. When you click continue, you will see the warning if you are submitting metagenomic and or metatranscriptomic datasets, sequence data should be split by each sample barcode for individual data files. My files are demultiplexed by sample, so I'll click Continue again to proceed. Otherwise, I could make updates here in SRA metadata. I'm now ready to upload my files. I'll choose Web Browser which will allow me to drag and drop files. But choose other options if you have large files or many files to upload. I'll click Continue. And I'm now at the last page, Review and Submit. This is your chance to review your submission and make any changes. When ready, click Submit. I now see my submission and its status on the My Submissions page. After your submission is processed and accessioned, you can use the Manage Data page to do things like change your release date and edit metadata. That's it for this tutorial. If you need help, you can follow the link to Home, scroll down to the SRA section, and click the button Learn More. For further help, please email us. When emailing, be sure to include your accession numbers or if you do not have those yet, your temporary SUB number. Write to sra at ncbi.nlm.nih.gov.